So, good morning again. Uh, first of all, I would like to excuse my colleague, uh, Dr. Zdenek Hayek, who should be standing here instead of me. But uh, because of his uh, state of health, he couldn't go here. So, uh, the presentation was on me. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't give me any instructions or any information what should I tell you. <laughs> so. I, I try to do my best, so just look at the pictures and have some fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, these are uh, some basic points of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the location of the Popovki site, uh, and then I continue to gra graveyard, uh, graveyard area of description of uh, excavation phases and some information about the graveyard. So, uh, this is the location of, of the Popovki site uh, in Czech Republic. As you can see, it's uh, in the south Moravia, about eight kilometers uh, to west from Brno. Uh, and the Louis is the, is the red rock here. Uh, there is a closer location fr from Brno. And here is the, re the relation of the graveyard to uh, watercourses. Of course, uh, this and this, this ponds are recent, but uh, the, the, main, the main rivers are, are still here from for, for a long time. Uh, there is some picture of the relief uh, of, the, of the site. As you can see, it's uh, in in some uh, valley of the, of the rivers, and it's quite protected with uh, hills about 400 meters above the sea level. Uh, there is some uh, schedule of the rescue excavation of the graveyard. As you can see, we did it in five uh, phases. We started in spring uh, uh, in uh, 2017. And as you can see on the picture on the right, uh, here is the, the area of the parcels or uh, just places when we took the, the rescue excavation. Uh, I was uh, well, here when they was building this, uh, this house and there were totally nothing and any, any pit or and any or some prehistoric uh, activity, there was completely really nothing. Um, these three are positive, so there, there is the graveyard, and about the surrounding area, we, we just don't know what, what should be here, uh, and I think we really, really can't uh, uh, know what should be here, because this is under the highway, and I suppose that uh, people don't, don't destroy their building for us to, to discover the rest of the graveyard. So, uh, these are the faces as we continue <coughs> with the excavations. Yeah, uh, and then there, there is the graveyard discovered. Uh, the size of the recognized part of area uh, of the graveyard is about 6,000 square meters. And as you can see, uh, the graveyard probably continues here to the, to the uh, northeast. And as you can see, some graves here. Uh, maybe there should be some graves uh, under the, the highway, but we don't really know if they uh, discovered some graves when they are building uh, the highway. Uh, we have uh, uh, 79 regular graves in the graveyard and uh, four empty pits in shape of, shape of grave. So maybe some symbolic or graves or cenotaphs or what should, how should we call it. Uh, we can uh, see there are seven or more special groups of, of the graves, as I sign. Yeah, that's it. So there is some suggestion of the of the group, special groups of the graves. 
there is a sex distribution uh, included uh, children. Uh, as, as you can see, the, the blues are the men and the reds are women and the grays are unspecified. Uh, I think, as I can remember, uh, the count, of the amount of the men and uh, women graves are equal. I think we have uh, 35 uh, women and about the, sa the same, the same number of men, and about 10 or, or, or about 10 unspecified graves. Um, there is a. An age distribution. Uh, uh, the colors on the on the graveyard is connected with uh, age groups on the on the left. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's if it's visible if it's visible well, but uh, the most the most uh, uh, graves was uh, filled with children uh, from. Uh, newborn to, newborn to ten, 10 years. Uh, what about the state of preservation uh, of the individuals? It was very various. Uh, both skeletons and grave goods are uh, mostly uh, quite good. And let's say about vessels that uh, their presentation one of, was uh, often quite bad. Uh, they were made not, they were not made very well their grave goods so as you can see this is this is perfect when we, when we found it it was it was perfect perfect preservation of the skeleton uh, this is quite good we find find this uh, this is not that bad uh, and when you can see this uh, this is re really bad. You can see just just the teeth. Uh, the state of preservation uh, was not connected with uh, position of the grave in the graveyard. Uh, you you could find there a well pres well preserved uh, grave next to really bad preserved grave. Uh, about some wealthy graves, graves uh, there are seven of them. Uh, they, are, they are highlighted with the yellow spots. Uh, wealthy, it means uh, some special grave goods are was uh, addicted to, to the grave. Uh, some metal artifacts, uh, uncommon amount of the vessels, bone artifacts or amber. Uh, as you can see on the picture, uh, Maybe the the phenomenon of the wealthy graves here were connected with the uh, spatial and sex diversion because uh, wealthy men are concentrated here and uh, women they are not concentrated because they are just blue here and here. But there's maybe some some diversion. Uh, men with in uh, wealthy graves dominated. There are five to three or two, I can't remember. Uh, including one little boy. Uh, the little boy is, is that one. It was five years old. So I show you some pictures of uh, of the graves. There is a woman uh, about twenty-five or to thirty-five years old. Uh, it was really the, the woman because she had uh, childbirth changes on on pelvis. Um, also, she had a tooth decay. Uh, she had uh, eight vessels, uh, including the typical bell beaker, as you, you can see later, and 31 bone buttons with the V, v shape. Uh, this is the highest number in all the graveyard, if I'm talking about the <coughs> bone buttons. Uh, you can see the, the grave boot here. Uh, this, is, this is the bell beaker. Bell beaker uh, which was found here, and uh, I think, if I could remember, well, it was the one woman on the graveyard who, who has this bell beaker, because it's uh, quite a typical man grave, grave good. Okay, that's another grave. Um, uh, here's a man, 
uh, quite quite older. Uh, our anthropologist could uh, reconstruct his height. It was about one meter uh, eighty eight centimeters. Uh, he had two vessels. Yeah, there are, these are the vessels, and there is a fragment of the wrist guard. It's not really well visible on the picture, uh, but the wrist guard was uh, under under the hands, and this is the copper arrow. Yeah, there is a picture of it. Okay. Another grave. There's this is the little boy. It was some some our prince as we called him, because he had uh, uh, the amber amber beds. As you can see on the picture, and you, I show you. Yeah, here. Uh, there. Oh, there. Uh, he he was the one who had uh, the amber beds in in whole graveyard. And in, the, in additional, he had uh, vessels, and as you can see on the picture, uh, the stone eggs and the uh, copper earrings and some piece of uh, of copper. Uh, the earrings, uh, yeah, it's, it's highlighted here. And the second one was under the under his head. Okay, and these are the amber amber beds. Uh, another grave. Uh, there was young man, uh, as the same age as as me, uh, and quite the same height. <laughs> uh, he had two vessels, two stone arrows, and some stone tools, as you can see here, and some some piece of uh, copper. You can see below. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find the photo, but you can see the position of the grave goods here on, on, the, on the drawing. Yeah. Uh, the copper was here and you can see the arrows, they are situated, situated here and the uh, uh, shape, uh, bow shape pendants are here. Okay. Uh, another grave. Uh, there is old man, a uh, quite old man, uh, and he had uh, one uh, bone, bow shaped uh, pendant as well, and it was also situated here in, in the chest. And also the stone arrow was behind his back. It's quite typical in in this graveyard, this position, and. Uh, one of the richest one. Uh, this is the man uh, about 30 years old, and except the uh, bow-shaped uh, pendant, he had a quite nice uh, copper dagger. It was situated here uh, under under his hands. Yes. As you can see, on the photo, this is the, this is the dagger. There are the stone stone tools, and there is the there is the pendant. Uh, and what is very quite strange, and I wonder how we could notice it, but we have the we we are the lucky luckiest. Uh, there is a little, little or very teeny fragment of copper behind his his, his head. Okay, uh, some conclusion. Uh, we have uh, in Popovki one of the biggest uh, Bell Beaker culture graveyard in Moravia, but uh, as uh, another similar site, uh, the graveyard. Uh, is not uh, probably uh, completely discovered and excavated. Uh, the number of men and women were, uh, was uh, almost equal, including children. Uh, the most of buried individuals are children to 10 years old. Uh, and the graves tend to be distributed in some groups uh, based on wealth, on some family relations of the wealth, uh, 
and so-called wealthy greys tended to be near to each other, as you can see before. Uh, so what to do next to um, discover some relations between uh, the individuals? Uh, the best would be to manage some DNA analysis, but as you probably know, they are really expensive. So I, I don't, don't know yet if we are, we are able to, to deal with it. So some sources and bibliography. Uh, this is the cast. As, um, as I mentioned, Dr. Hyatt, he, he was uh, the excavation manager and I was his assistant with one of my colleagues. And there's another person. And thank you for your attention again. <laughs>